This is an affidavit for natural death. There are many different reasons for eating the carnivore diet. For some, it's to lose weight. Others, it's to increase their energy or boost their mood, get off medication, reverse type two diabetes and other diseases, and just all around get healthy. In this video, I'm going to share with you my reasons for seeking this lifestyle. And this paper here is one of my whys. Welcome back everybody. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Cassie and I am the other half of Carnivore Quest. My husband Larry and I are on a journey to lose well over 200 pounds living the carnivore lifestyle. This video is about my why. Why am I following the proper human diet? In April 2015, Larry and I started our low carb journey. We had started with the Atkins diet and we had some success on it. We were doing really well. On June 30th, Larry rushed me to the emergency room. I had been feeling ill for a few days, just thought it was a virus, just kind of shrugged it off until it started getting very bad. Come to find out my appendix had ruptured and it was a nasty rupture. It went everywhere in my abdominal cavity. The surgery was over five hours. It was pretty rough. I was in the hospital for six days and it took me three months to recover before I could return to work. I had recovered or so I thought. Fast forward to July of the following year. I started feeling ill. I was nauseated. I had irregular BMs, off and on fever, abdominal pain, and men, sorry, you can't relate to this, but my cycles were a beast. They were heavy and painful and I just, I was not feeling well. I went to the ER, they did a CAT scan, or an MRI, I really don't remember which one, but they did a scan and they see that there is a mass and there's some infection. They had found a mass on my sigmoid colon and both ovaries and tubes were infected. While in the hospital, they ran tests every day and they were convinced that it was just my tubes and my ovaries. They wanted to do surgery and I don't know why, but I refused. I went home, I still wasn't feeling all that great. It was off and on, I continued to work. There were some days I felt great. Some days I felt fine and other days I could not get out of bed. A few more weeks had passed and I wasn't feeling any better. The fever was still off and on, so I made an appointment with a GI. I had a colonoscopy within a few days and the doctor had discovered that I had colon cancer. We learned of the cancer September 2nd. By September 7th, I had surgery. Well, it was quite a harrowing process the next few days. There were so many different doctor appointments and specialists that I needed to see. Pre-op, it was insane. And believe me when I tell you, the paperwork that you have to fill out it's this thick. I managed to hold on to some of that paperwork. This is an informational piece of paper. It just gives me the date and the time of the surgery, where to go, pre-op instructions, just things like that. I don't know why I wanted to hold on to this because I'm not that type of sentimental person, but this was significant to me. And the other piece of paper that I held on to, um, <laughs> this is an affidavit for natural death. <laughs> you hear the word cancer. And your first thought is death. That's real. Time. I had to go and regain my composure. I'm all good now. Uh, Y'all better not be crying because I'm all good. I'm alive, well, and living in America. After the surgery, it was confirmed that it was cancer. It was stage 3B sigmoid colon cancer. It had only metastasized into one of 15 lymph nodes that were pulled. They referred me to an oncologist. I start those appointments, meeting up with nutritionists. Again, another dictionary thick load of paperwork. So before meeting with the oncologist, there was a slew of blood work that needed to be done. Larry and I meet the oncologist and he's a very nice man. So then he tells us, I have great news for you. Cassie, you're cancer free. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. You know, I had never felt such elation like that before because, you know, it had been weeks and I'm just dreading this appointment. You know, what are the results gonna be? It feels like my life is hanging in the balances and um, it, was, it was a long week. And then he tells me that they're gonna prescribe six months of chemotherapy. That didn't make a lot of sense to me because he had just told me that I'm cancer free. 
I thought, okay, well, I'll go along with your recommendation. You're the head of that department. You didn't get to be where you're at by not knowing your stuff. So the following weeks, there are a barrage of more lab work, more blood work, and a PET scan. My blood numbers were clear. My PET scan came back clear. And every time I went to either a PET scan or blood work, I would start crying. So yeah, this paper. I initially started with a gentleman named Chris Beats Cancer. His name is Chris Rourke. He um, had the same type of cancer, same stage, and surgery as well, but he did not go through the chemotherapy. And he beat cancer now. He did his, his way, you do you. His way that he staved off cancer, juicing carrots. Lots and lots of carrots. So it went from there, and I just kept going down that rabbit hole and discovering other types of therapies, and I stumbled upon the ketogenic diet. And that's where it started. My family was not on board. I was in this alone for a little while, even Larry, you know, because his mom had cancer before she had chemo and radiation and uh, she survived it. So that's what he knew. And that's what we're taught. If you get cancer, you go to the doctor, you have chemotherapy or radiation surgery and you get better. It didn't sit right with me. Like I said, every appointment, I cried before it. Something kept drawing me in saying, this is the way to go. So I had to make that phone call to my doctor and I basically told him what I had been researching and all I wanted him to do was continue to monitor my progress, just run some blood work and just to see where I was at. And he agreed. And every one of those lab tests that I had, I passed with flying color. So knowing that I'm gonna do this lifestyle and feeling that my life is hanging in the balances again, I had to do this, I had to stick with it. So I juiced carrots and I ate natural. I went vegan, I went vegetarian. Where I'm going with this, the power of food addiction. Every time I slipped and fell and I'm eating this garbage, I know I'm feeling those cancer cells. I know that it could return at any moment. There's no promise on this. I went rogue, I rolled the dice. That power is incredibly strong. While I would eat a donut or a piece of pizza or whatever, it was in my head that this is probably going to kill you. And I still did it. And I went back day after day. Uh, we got off and on our diet. We yo-yoed, we dabbled with keto, we dabbled with carnivore. We've been trying to do this for seven years. And for six of those years, cancer was always in the back of my head, but it didn't matter because the food was just too powerful. I'm telling you folks, it wasn't until the BBBE challenge that everything changed. It clicked. I've never had a brighter outlook or more confidence than I have being on this carnivore diet. Right now, I eat mostly beef. I still have that little bit of a crutch with the heavy whipping cream, but I was heading down that one-way road again. BDBE challenge, I cannot stress enough. It's hitting the reset. You are restricting your diet in such a way and you are reprogramming your brain. And if you do it for just for 30 days, you're going to notice a difference. If you're on the fence and you're feeling defeated and you've been down that road, I can assure you, if I can do it, I know you can do it. I know you can. I'm the weakest person I know. And cancer couldn't stop that food addiction. It has to be up here and you have to be determined. If you're that food addict and you cannot control yourself, it has to be carnivore. I just want you all to know you can do it. Yeah, we're gonna do it together. I really hope I was able to inspire somebody today. I honestly believe that life is all about timing and this was the right time. Thank you all for stopping by and watching. If you're interested in getting a little extra support, we have this awesome Facebook community. It's the Carnivore Quest community. We have over 1200 members in it right now and we are on fire. We have a good time, there are challenges and just a lot of support and a lot of love and encouragement. I just love it so much and I would love it if you would join us too. So y'all know how I'm going to close this, don't you? No sugar, no carbs, no cheating. I love y'all.